Hello, I'm Richard from Blue Sky Space. This is the latest in a series of video blog posts that will discuss the key scientific, technical and organisational facets of the Twinkle Space Mission and its three-year survey programmes for exoplanet and solar system science. In this blog, our project scientist, Dr Billy Edwards, will walk you through various model mission scenarios that will inspire and drive the array of science cases for the exoplanet survey. Today, we know of over 4,000 exoplanets, around 3,000 of which transit their host stars. Twinkle's field of regard, the patch of sky at which the spacecraft can be pointed, is centered on the ecliptic. Twinkle is then able to point up to 40 degrees away from this plane. Now, while this means some planets, such as those in the initial Kepler field, cannot be observed by Twinkle, there are currently over 400 known planets within Twinkle's field of regard. These vary from small, Earth-sized planets, such as those in the TRAPPIST-1 system, to large, hot Jupiters, such as HD 209458b. HD 209 has been studied by a number of ground-based and space-based instruments, and shown here is a simulated spectra that could be obtained with three twinkle transits. The modelled atmosphere includes water, methane and ammonia, along with a cloud deck. By performing a Bayesian retrieval on the simulated data, we can see that the twinkle would allow for a thorough characterization of hot gaseous planets such as HG209 in just a few observations. Surveys such as TESS are predicted to discover hundreds of additional planets within Twinkle's field of regard. Now, not all of these planets, uh, and those that we know of today, will be suitable for atmospheric characterization. Therefore, we have simulated Twinkle's performance for each of these planets to understand which ones we could feasibly observe by setting requirements on the desired data quality. We find that when the mission launches, there'll be hundreds of potential targets for Twinkle. These will be diverse in terms of their size and temperature. Many of these planets will be observable through transmission spectroscopy, others in emission, and some using both techniques. The time required to observe each of these has been used to simulate two examples of what an exoplanet survey with Twinkle could look like. Twinkle's native resolving power varies from 20 to 70 across the simultaneous 0.5 to 4.5 micron wavelength coverage. However, interesting science can also be achieved with lower resolutions. In the first mission scenario, while the goal for each planet was to achieve the full resolution of the instrument, any data where a resolution of greater than one-eighth of this was considered useful. In the second scenario, both the goal resolving power and the minimum were set to half the native. We find that for this first case, there is a split in the final resolution achieved. While over half the planets were observed at full resolution, which would allow for the atmosphere to be well characterised, the rest achieved much lower resolutions. An eighth of Twinkle's resolution is around 10 data points, with which you could determine the cloudiness of the atmosphere. For the second mission scenario, all the planets were observed at around half resolution, which would likely allow for the main atmospheric components to be deduced. Interestingly, the number of planets in each survey was roughly the same, with around 90 being observed. These preliminary studies have shown that in a three-year survey, Twinkle could characterize a diverse array of exoplanet targets. So as you can see, the Twinkle team are putting together various scenarios of what the exoplanet survey could look like, but ultimately the scientific options will be decided by the scientists who join as survey members. Founding members who joined the programme before January 2021 will be invited to join the Exoplanet Science team and help us shape the mission. If you would like to find out more about the mission or discuss membership to the survey, then please contact me on richard at bssl.space. Thanks for watching.